Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, I thought I'd give you a quick follow-up from what I talked about on Monday. I went down to St. Louis first couple of days this week to speak at a conference, and while down there, I got out and saw uh, what the Mississippi River looked like and tweeted this out on Monday. But just to show you the depth of the water, remember where you see uh, this region right in through here, there's a road in there, and uh, it's got about 10 feet of water on it. In fact, the water's going up about two-thirds of the way up the steps to the arch, and it was impressive to see see this amount of water but what it made me really worry about is that's all got to go somewhere and it is going right now down the Mississippi and it'll eventually be in New Orleans. Thankfully the crest was last Sunday uh, but still the water levels are very very high. Now I'm sure St. Louis isn't too worried about the river right now given what happened last night uh, in the NHL but still this is a major concern for agriculture. I also want to tell you you know we talked about the severe weather that was going to be moving through Germany. This was uh, in uh, the Bavarian region so this is kind of including Nuremberg and um, uh, Munich, you know, that that part of Germany got hit pretty hard with some severe storms. And these are just some of the, the, the storms that went through. This is some hail you're seeing here. So uh, the Europeans doing a good job with forecasting their severe weather threat earlier on this week. But uh, it was those temperatures across the United States that were quite, uh, well, there was a huge spread. And if you just kind of look at this map, this was valid 3 p.m. Pacific time, so 5 p.m. Central time here uh, on Wednesday, so just yesterday. And you can see the, I call it the invasion of some cooler air that has really come into the midsection of the country, sweeping through a pretty, pretty large front that's moved its way all the way to the Gulf now. But look at the heat we saw in parts of the southwest. We saw triple-digit heat running up the Central Valley of California and some really, really warm conditions in parts of Oregon and Washington. And in Oregon, some of those storms uh, basically popped. You got this uh, enough heating that we've got some daytime convection uh, basically uh, uh, triggered off the uh, mountains here, but uh, certainly a destabilized atmosphere. Just amazing to see these storms erupt on the mountains. I could watch, I could watch satellite imagery like this all day long. Just incredible to see what the flow of the atmosphere can do here. Okay, as we get into this, though, I want to talk first precipitation, then we're going to come back to temperatures. Over the last 72 hours, here's where those storms kind of blew up in parts of Oregon and Idaho. You just saw this. We also saw some really strong storms that went through parts of central uh, Kansas, producing quite a few hail reports. And you can almost see the trajectory of the rain behind that front uh, that came through yesterday. The Northeast, we're still going to be dealing with more rain and storms today, and we did bring some very very needed precipitation down here uh, to the uh, coastal areas of North and South Carolina and Georgia. Now, that area over the last week has picked up an enormous amount of rain, and there is a lot of flooding going on in this corridor here, specifically right in through this area. But given that uh, really dry time period they spent back in April, May, in part in the beginning of June, um, this is rain that is that is desperately needed. Now, before I come back to telling you what we're going to be seeing in precipitation, because that is a big story, I want to talk about this first. This is a map I generate every day. It shows you the growing degree day anomalies using uh, a base of 50 degrees and a max of 86. Uh, what it's showing you here is the anomalies from March 1st all the way through June 11th. Okay, And we can clearly see that there's been just a few places, kind of the, the corners here of the United States, southeast and northwest, that are ahead on growing degree day units over that time period. That's kind of the quarter where we're watching. Now, why I bring this up is I'm going to take off those drawings, and I'm going to show you a year ago. So when you look at this, everywhere that you see those reds, those are places that were ahead by this point a year ago, from March 1st all the way through uh, June 12th. Now remember, we had a very cold April, so this is mostly heat coming in May and early June, but look at the differences a year can make. And this is going to be a major story we're going to continue to tell throughout the month of June and possibly into the beginning of July. And that is one where this crop, which went in very late because of a lot of rain, including some folks that are trying desperately to finish up planting and dealt with this rain just in the last three days. Well, that crop is needing some heat and it's not getting it. And one of the big reasons, this deeper trough that we're going to see here in the day on Thursday that's plunging here into the Great Lakes states. Meanwhile, kind of weak split flow out here in the Pacific coming into the uh, western United States is going to allow for another day of a pretty uh, extreme heat here. So the country is going to be split again on temperatures. Take a look at this. This is high temperatures forecast for the day on Thursday. Parts of us over here in the Great Lakes states and eastern Corn Belt right in through this quarter might see high temperatures that struggle to get the 70. In fact, look in Michigan and parts of Indiana and Ohio here. We might see some high temperatures that may not get to 60. We're going to have to wait and see. It's all going to depend on, on clouds versus sunshine here. But with this system that's exiting up in the north uh, northeast, it's going to be cool in the northeast as well. 
Uh, meanwhile, nice break from the extreme heat we saw recently with temperatures in the mid 80s stretching across this area. But we got another scorcher over here for the southeast, excuse me, the southwest with temperatures getting there triple digit again, uh, parts of Arizona, Southern California. But the Central Valley calming down a bit can be seeing temperatures that will get into the upper 90s, but none of the maybe none of the triple digit we saw just yesterday. Still Yakima Valley up here. We're going to see those temperatures deep in the 90s as well again today. So the country's kind of split here on temperatures and uh, it's all due to this this the flow pattern we have in the upper levels of the atmosphere so for the next five days we continue to hang on to this cooler bias we're gonna see it in a few moments in the flow of the jet stream here and we will see now in days six to ten so this has been a major model trend we've then seen a better establishment of the trough in this area uh, suggesting that much of the Corn Belt much of the high plains much of the central plains are gonna continue to be on this cooler bias as we stretch things out uh, you know here uh, pretty far this will get us all the way out to, to June 23rd, uh, seeing some cooler weather. And we, we would want the opposite of this right now, given the delays that we've seen in planting and the cooler weather uh, we've been dealing with already. Now, I think maybe bigger news overall is this. I'm going to start off by showing you the national blended model. So remember, this brings in the European model. This brings in the GFS. This brings in all of the other models we run at INSEP and blends them together in, in a smart way. And I, I'm not, it's, it's, and as an atmospheric scientist, when you see a nine-day forecast for rainfall inside that area that I just showed you here that's well over six inches, we do have to be a little bit skeptical, but I'm, I'm going to try to assess the pattern to, su to suggest that some regions may be seeing this much precip. We have kind of two corridors over which we're going to be getting some heavy rain. And people in North Dakota looking at this map, people in parts of Saskatchewan, parts of Manitoba, even parts of Alberta are loving what we're seeing right in through here because we've been desperate for rainfall. Much of the western United States is dry. And I, I know you see this little corridor through here showing up as dry. But we will be getting, as the flow comes into this front that's going to be parked in this area, uh, we will be getting widely scattered showers and storms that when we kind of blend these models together we don't we don't pick up on that really well so it this is uh, devastatingly wet and so we're going to just switch over and take a look at our two major global models the ecmwf is over here on the left and the gfs is over here on the right and we do see that overall they see the same two corridors see that although precipitation amounts are different uh still they're very heavy and, uh, and we're going to have to talk about this and what is going on here because these two models are picking up on an enormous amount of precip over the next 10 days. So we'll get into the timing of this and figure out the source and uh, here in just a few seconds. I want to let you know about some, some news here in the weather world. NOAA just released uh, its new uh, FV3 model. They've been testing this now for quite some time. It is now the new operational uh, GFS. They're going to continue to run the old one for a little while here, but we've made a major upgrade and uh, we Nutrient are going to be following this very carefully. We have been for the last several months to see how well this model is performing, uh, but they need to get it into operation so that they can continue to get it better and better and better. So I'm excited for uh, NOAA in the United States and uh, we're going to see if we can't uh, get some better forecasting out of it. Uh, but getting back to the short term here, if we look in the day on Thursday, you'll see here in a few minutes that we're going to have continued scattered showers and storms moving through parts of the northeast here. So Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland. We'll take a look at what I've got for you today. Widely scattered storms in the higher mountains here. Uh, and then right here uh, on parts of the high plains and the western plains, we're going to be seeing uh, the chances for storms. On Friday, I'm watching this little corridor right in through here again, but it'll stretch basically from Texas all the way up to North Dakota. We're going to be seeing some storms. And this is Saturday down here so you can see the same regions targeted over the next three days and it's basically the flow pattern that's getting us there starting you off at uh, six o'clock in the morning central time here uh, with our high resolution rapid refresh you're going to see the first low exiting there in the northeast so you can see that again that's uh, bringing widely scattered showers early in the day through parts of michigan ohio then that spreads of course to the northeast with time uh, you'll see the tail end of this skirting there through florida so widely scattered storms on that as well so some potential for some heavy rain Meanwhile, turn your attention to the midsection of the country. A lot of us here in the, in the central Corn Belt could get through the day on Thursday without any rain. So a brief break before all that heavy stuff comes in. But if you go back to the central plains, you do notice where the storms are kind of firing up today. Watch it again here. This is middle of the afternoon on Thursday. 
pushing through that area and then throughout the overnight hours over here into parts of central Kansas, the latest high resolution rapid refresh models picking up on that. Uh, outside of that, you can see moving through southern Canada there into northern parts of the United States, uh, some widely scattered storms. And then again, like we said, with the heating out west, uh, we're going to just blow up some storms here on the mountains. Uh, this is not the monsoonal flow that many are anticipating out west, though we still got quite a ways to go before we get there. Now, I want to tell you about this flow pattern because it's quite interesting here. Let's watch it all play out first. You're going to see the atmosphere here really favoring some upper level blocking, excuse me, some high latitude blocking that for a while is going to be keeping troughing in the midsection of the country. You can see it right here. So as I step you through, this is Saturday into Sunday into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. We, we can't shake this. So what I want you to notice is that it'll be right along a boundary in through here where we're going to be having some of our best upper level support. And this is the ensemble version of this. We're actually going to see a few short waves sneak through uh, on the uh, as this trough develops and through this area, which is why we've got those two corridors we're watching very carefully for the heaviest rainfall amounts. Uh, so this is, this is a different pattern than we, of course, saw with the heavy rain back in May, but it's still one where there's a trough in the central United States, and that just keeps cool and that keeps us wet. Now, I want to at least talk to you about something I addressed in my long-range update yesterday. It appears that by the time we get to the 26th, 27th, and 28th of June, the very end of the month, we tend to go back into a flow pattern that's dominated by a ridge in the Gulf of Alaska and a deeper trough here over the west coast. I'm kind of drawing this a little bit higher amplitude than the, than the height lines are showing, but this could signal a return of some warmth to the Corn Belt, but not until we get to the end uh, of the uh, of the month of June here. We're way out in the forecast. This is, uh, this is 14 days out in the forecast here. So uh, we're going to have to watch that very carefully, but we would definitely welcome that warmth. It doesn't, I don't know how long it's going to stick around, but we are going to welcome it at any time just to help this crop get going. Now let's turn our attention to the European model to see how things play out uh, kind of in, in higher resolution here over the next 10 days. So as we kind of just take a look, we have system number one exiting in the northeast. There it is. Higher pressure occupies much of the day on Thursday into Friday in the midsection of the country here. But then you're going to see the scattered showers and storms like we just saw moving through parts of Nebraska and Kansas. So we've, we've seen that. Meanwhile, first kind of a setup here for the rain that might move through parts of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and into Manitoba, then eventually toward the Great Lakes states early in the morning on Friday. So what do we see on Friday? Scattered showers, storms moving through parts of Wisconsin and Michigan. We see on that boundary, so it's sitting right here, where we could be seeing uh, you know, a more precipitation right in through there. This is again is on Friday into early Saturday morning. Meanwhile, to the south of it, right in through here, see this area of higher atmospheric pressure? This is feeding moisture into a boundary you're gonna see set up right here, pretty much for the rest of this animation. And so getting into Friday night, into Saturday, this quarter, just right in through here, you're gonna see repeated chances of showers and thunderstorms. So here we go. The boundary is now established. And what do we see? This is now Saturday night into Sunday morning. This is now Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon. And we do get some breaks in there, but you're going to keep seeing it come back to that same pattern. This is by next Thursday night into Friday and then getting out to next weekend. So what did we see here? We just saw multiple chances in this corridor of seeing some pretty heavy rainfall. And it did spread. It was it was much across the eastern two-thirds of the country that we saw rain. But again, you kind of saw it with me over the next seven to ten days. It's that core, those two areas I just kind of highlighted here that are in for it for quite a bit of rainfall. It's going to be one of these situations where we're going to now cast our way through to see when and where the storms set up, how they set up, and what kind of heavy rain we get. But just remember that we're watching two areas very carefully over the next uh, 10 days that could potentially be seeing a lot of rainfall. Okay, so that's kind of it for the United States. Taking you abroad here, I want to take you back over to what's going on in Europe. We still have a pretty highly amplified pattern, uh, keeping much of, of Central and Eastern Europe quite warm. So just for orientation, again, this is the Black Sea in through here. So Turkey to the south of it, that's about the only place that I keep seeing a really wet bias, but very warm and dry. So the Russian wheat belt continuing to show up dry. Ukraine continuing to show up uh, drier than average here. 
uh, while the UK, which has been very wet, uh, is going to continue to see their wetter pattern over the coming days here. By the way, if you've been hearing in the news about the Russian wildfires, these are not in the Russian wheat belt. They are way, way over in Siberia. Uh, but I just want to make sure that that was uh, clear here. This was not coming through the Russian wheat belt. Meanwhile, if we just turn our attention quickly to India, a couple of things to note here. Look at how poor the air quality is through parts of the Ganges River Valley. Uh, you can see here kind of in, the, in the, this very smoggy, hazy picture. But a lot of, of Indians here that are on the uh, west coast are concerned about this tropical system. Thankfully, it is going to be moving away from the coast here. But if you just look over the next uh, you know, 10 days at total accumulated precip, we're still going to be extremely hot in this area. The monsoon is slowly making its way north. Here's the direction the tropical system goes. And also we're still seeing this particular spot uh, in, in China's major growing regions there just south of Beijing showing up very dry. Uh, it's the Meiyu front is kind of parked right down here. That's a monsoonal feature and on it we might be seeing lots and lots and lots of rain uh, across that region. But again, remember in China, we're watching these two corridors for the uh, biggest uh, production of, of, of some of our staple crops here. Uh, so with that uh, kind of that global perspective, we're going to go to wrap up the forecast video. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to all of our ag forecasts that come out of my.nutrientagsolutions.com every day of the week. Hope you all have a great weekend and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.